Hi everyone, and today I have yet another very interesting lens with unique capabilities, again from the Venus Optics company, the Lauer 15mm f4 macro. It's designed for full frame or APS-C cameras, and it's the widest angle one to one macro lens ever made. Its images stretch very wide indeed, and the lens can focus extremely closely, right up to the front glass element. This new lens comes in at a little under $500, or about £350. I'd like to thank Venus Optics for sending me a sample to test for this video, although as with all my reviews, this video is not sponsored by them in any way. So why has no one ever attempted to market an ultra-wide-angle macro lens before? Well, either there was never any interest for such a product, or no one knew that there would be an interest. Unquestionably, the pictures you can get with it are dramatic and creative. A tiny subject is brought closely into view, but with an expansive background behind it, which would normally play no part at all in a macro picture. You can also get new perspectives on slightly bigger subjects. I've never seen anything quite like this before. It's a creative challenge to get really good pictures with such a lens, but it's also very rewarding when you succeed. The lens also has a bonus feature, which is surprising and unusual. A shift mechanism, which can correct converging verticals in your pictures, rescuing your perspective. Normally, with such a wide-angle lens, when you tilt up or down, you get the usual perspective problems, as you can see here. However, with the lower lens, you can shift the optics as desired to correct this. It's a feature you only normally see on very expensive tilt-shift lenses, and it's pretty enjoyable and helpful to use. There's a little lever on the side of the lens, and when you press it, you can lock the shift mechanism into place at the top, bottom, or normal position. There's just enough friction in the control mechanism for you to keep the lens adjusted at a level in between, too, although it's not quite the level of control you'll get with a professional tilt-shift lens. Still, neat. Let's look a bit more at the build quality then. It's a completely manual lens, manual focus, manual aperture. Manual focus isn't really a problem for such a wide-angle lens though, it's easy to get your shots in focus, especially if you're shooting in live view mode. The lens's body is fully made of metal. It's small, but it feels very solid and well made. There's a 77mm filter thread around the front, so you can use filters, but I'd highly recommend using thin ones to avoid extra vignetting. The focus ring is at the bottom, near the lens mount, and it turns extremely smoothly, being well damped. It turns the same way as Canon's lenses. When you focus as closely as macro distances, the lens's front element extends forwards. You have to be cautious with this lens to avoid bumping or scratching the front glass element. The aperture ring is quite large and sits at the front of the lens, unusually. It turns completely smoothly from f4 down to f32, and even a touch darker. The smooth iris mechanism is a bonus for video makers, although still photographers might prefer to have clicks at each f-stop. The lens's iris mechanism has 14 aperture blades for fantastically smooth bokeh when stopped down. The lens comes packaged with a hood and a three-year warranty from Lauer, although the likelihood of such a tough little manual focus lens breaking is low. Its small size makes it a little fiddly to handle, but all in all, it has great build quality. Let's look at image quality now, firstly on a full frame camera, a 20 megapixel Canon 6D. At f4, the lens is extremely sharp in the middle of its images with very good contrast. As for the corners, we see some softness at f4, although it's not too bad. The corners are also quite dark on a full frame camera. Stop down to f5.6 for a noticeable increase in sharpness and brightness, leading on to good sharpness at f8, although we also see a touch of chromatic aberration on contrasting edges. At f11, you get really excellent picture quality from corner to corner. So it's a pretty good performance on full frame, the lens is always super sharp in the middle, and with a little stopping down, we see very good corners. Now I'll quickly look at how the image quality is affected when you shift the lens. Remember, the shift mechanism is more of a bonus feature to the lens rather than its main design. 
let's see how it performs. At F4, image quality remains great in the middle of the image. On the near corner, we see a little softness and chromatic aberration at F4. On a stretched corner, we see darkness and a lot of softness. We're probably picking up some problems here with field curvature. Stop down the aperture for improvements. You'll probably want to go down to F11, where we see more brightness in that stretched corner and good sharpness, until we look into the far edge. We're also picking up some colour fringing here. Looking into the nearer corner though, we see great image quality, apart from the colour fringing. So, the little lower lens may not carry the same image quality as a professional tilt-shift lens when it's shifted, but stop down its aperture and you can get some really quite usable results with good sharpness. You'll get much more resolution this way through the lens than by correcting using editing software. Alright, let's see how it performs now on an APS-C camera, an 18 megapixel Canon 60D. At f4, in the middle, we see great sharpness again. The corners a bit softer, and with more pronounced chromatic aberration. At f5.6 we see more sharpness, and it stays about that sharp as you stop down further. And finally, just for completeness, let's see how the lens works on APS-C when the optics are shifted. Picture quality at f4 is sharp in the middle with some colour fringing. In the nearer corner it remains sharp. In the far corner we see a lot of softness. Stop down to f8 though, or f11, for improvements, but we still catch quite a bit of colour fringing. So, on an APS-C camera, the lens can be fairly sharp and useful, especially stopped down to f5.6, but when you shift the optics to their most extreme position, perhaps unsurprisingly, we see problems with chromatic aberration. Alright, let's look at distortion and vignetting. They're not a big deal on APS-C, so I'll be looking at it on a full-frame camera. The lens projects some quite clear barrel distortion here, with a moustache pattern. We see dark corners at f4. Stop down to f5.6 or f8 for more brightness across the image frame. And now, the all-important close-up picture quality. I won't try to test resolution at life size, because my test subject is unrealistically close to the lens here. So, I'm testing at nearly life size magnification. You see before you a tiny old 1935 threepence, bearing the likeness of George V. At f4, the image is sharp with good detail. Sharpness becomes perfect at f5.6, all the way down to f16. Due to the effects of diffraction, f22 is a little soft, f32 very soft. Well, that's actually a typically good performance for a macro lens, we're getting sharp close-up images here. Let's see now about work against bright light. Like most macro lenses, the lower 15mm struggles when bright lights get into the picture frame, showing a lot of flaring. It'll be best to use the included lens hood whenever you can. And finally, bokeh. Due to the macro ability of this lens, it's important for the bokeh to look nice, and thankfully, your outer focus backgrounds always look pretty smooth, whether the aperture is wide open or stopped down. It's only in very bizarre situations, such as ticking your camera into the middle of a jungle of wooden rods, that you ever see difficult bokeh. Well, it's always interesting for me to be reviewing lenses which try to be a bit different from the competition, and the Lauer 15mm f4 macro truly is something new. It has some optical issues, such as distortion and flaring, but when you're actually using the lens they're quite forgivable, as you'll be too busy getting creative, distinctive pictures with it to really care. The lens is very sharp indeed, especially when its aperture is topped down a little bit, and the shift mechanism is also very enjoyable and useful to use. Again, ideally, with your aperture topped down. The lens's build quality is also on a high level here. If you'd like to see some really interesting sample pictures from this lens, then I highly recommend checking out Thomas Shahan's review over on his excellent macro photography channel. Seems to be a good lens for shooting in the jungle. Macro lens enthusiasts who fancy a challenge, something different, might well be in for a real treat with this fascinating Lauer optic.